All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our teaching. Uh, so I'd invite any one of us to please pray. Anyone who would like to pray, please go ahead. Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We humble ourselves before you. We pray that you would minister to us this morning, help us to learn together. We pray, O oh God, that we all will have good connectivity this morning and also to listen to your word and help us to uh, implement this in our uh, daily life and our ministry as well, God. We thank you for Pastor Paul. We thank you for all of us gathered this morning. We submit once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Uh, it got muted, Pastor. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so we, we talked about the cell group meeting and uh, general guidelines of how uh, you and I can you know lead a good life group. But again, everything that we're sharing is from you know things that we have learned, uh, things that we have seen, things that have worked, things that are, haven't worked. Now, if you know, you know, some of you may be already leading groups and. Uh, and you feel that that's how you want to do it, just go ahead and do it that way. But these are just guidelines, pointers uh, that can help you, right? Uh, and so we talked about, you know, all members in the guidelines that all members are encouraged to share, uh, uh, keep the interaction Christ-centered, prayer, avoid gossip, murmur, uh, always keep the vision of the church in mind, right? Uh, so even though you are a cell group, you're meeting during the week, uh, remember the vision. Don't don't feel like okay, this is uh, a separate vision. Yeah, no, it's it's always aligned to the main vision of the church. And then we also looked at a sample schedule uh, there on, on the notes. Uh, again, this is just a sample. That's why it's called a sample schedule. So you can, you know, you can make changes to it, right? How you feel like uh, uh, preparing a schedule. See what works for you. Right, so let's get into the next point. Uh, we just did a brief on uh, the upward, inward, outward model, and uh, uh, this model was uh, was you know brought up by Jim Eggly, and he developed this tool. And uh, the reason we're going to talk about this tool is because many many churches across globally have used this tool, and it has helped them. They have seen fruit. It has been tried and tested, and uh, you know they've seen that cell groups have been uh, have been fruitful, growing, multiplying. And so we're just going to talk about a few aspects uh, of this model. And I'm sure most of us may have maybe already doing this in our churches or ministries or cell groups. Uh, but uh, this upward, inward, outward, and forward model. Right, four pointers. Uh, Jesus himself summarized these four values. Right? So let's just look at it. First one is the upward model. So self explanatory, right? Uh, Matthew 22 38 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So, in a cell group, if you are a cell group leader or you're part of a cell group, attending a cell group, First things first is the upward model. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And, and, and that is the number one reason why you're attending the cell group. Now, if the reason of leading a cell group or attending a cell group is not Matthew 22, 38, uh, then we got to reconsider why we are doing this help group, right? Uh, because the whole point is to become more like Jesus, right? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and God, right? And as a cell group leader, that is what should be your vision, right? Your your heart and your desire must be that. Hey, I want to love the Lord my God with everything that I have. And when people see it, it will become an overflow. 
right? So it'll just overflow into the group. People will catch it. Say, hey, even I want to do, even I want to love the Lord. I want to do everything that I'm doing for the Lord. I'm not doing it for eye service. I'm not doing it for people to look at me and compliment me and applaud me. No, I'm doing it because I love the Lord my work. Right? So it could be a menial task or it could be a big task. Uh, it could be something very small that you're doing in a cell group or in a ministry, or it could be a very important uh, you know, role that you're fulfilling. Whatever it is, remember you're doing it for the Lord. And, and, and Paul also writes in the letter series, he says, uh, whatever you do, do it as if you're doing it under the Lord. Right? And so as believers, as ministers of God, remember this, the upward morning. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Because I want to love my God, my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with everything that I have, right? And, you know, you know, the best part about this is when you are doing something for the Lord and when people don't applaud you or don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, they don't applaud you and they don't say, okay, uh, they don't put you up on a pedestal, it's all right. We won't feel anything, right? I say, I'm not doing it for people. Of course, there are, we work as a team. There are people that God has placed. We work as a team, yes. But what I'm doing, I'm doing it for the Lord. So whether people are watching or not watching, whether people will applaud or don't applaud, people encourage or don't encourage, I want to do what I'm doing because I'm doing it for the Lord. Very simple, right? Uh, and this model is very powerful because remember, people can see through us. And, uh, there's a saying, right? You can fool, you can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool everyone all the time, right? Uh, and you know, it just becomes natural when when we spend time in prayer, when we spend time in God's presence, uh, spending time in His Word. Uh, God is changing us. What's happening? We are, it, it's, it becomes an overflow. Everything becomes so natural. We don't have to pretend to be somebody. And when people see it, they will catch it. All right, that's the first one. Second one is the inward model. Now, Matthew 22, 39. Love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know how many of you had uh, really tough and difficult neighbors. Right, and uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. I love you, your neighbor as yourself. Basically, uh, the inward model is is love and value expressed to one another in the group. Right now, when I love the Lord my God with all my heart, the upward model. What I'm also supposed to do is I need to express that love to the people around me. Now, Jesus didn't say, you know, uh, he, he didn't say things and not do it. So, for example, he didn't say, the Father and I have one, just as the Father loves you, I have loved you. But he didn't say, okay, I love you and do nothing about it. He expressed it. How did he express it? He expressed it to his disciples. He expressed it to well, the people. You know, the Bible says that uh, when he saw the multitudes come. He was moved with compassion when he saw the sick and the and the poor and the people who are wanting healing. He was compassionate. He was broken. He, when he saw Lazarus dead, he would he he healed. So there was love that was expressed. It was shown outwardly, right? And the inward model is expressed by love for one another, they become committed to living in community with one another, right? So in a cell group, say there are 10 or 12 of them, they're all committed to each other. They all love each other. They care for each other. They support each other. So that's why, you know, there is no, there is no place for condemnation, gossip, backbiting. There's no place for it, right? Why? Because there's love. 
when we love one another in you know i'm not just saying okay in a cell group but now in context to a cell group when we love one another there is no place for gossip and backbiting right now here's another important point this value or this culture that is the love that is expressed in the inward mode inside of the cell group also extends outside the cell right because remember our life is not only in church and cell group most of our time is spent in the workplace most of the time we we are outside if you look at it church in a year probably about 52 sundays cell groups maybe once a week right four cell groups a month 48 cell groups a year hardly anything but the rest of the time we're outside right now uh, but it's important to understand that this commitment of community uh, is also outside of the meeting and the reason it is there is because if there are no relationships outside of this meeting you will be, the relationships will become very weak and the meetings or the cell group meetings will be very artificial right uh, it it won't be a place of people knowing each other now let me give you this example say for example you uh, you know you know a person and, uh, your friend now you've not met him for 10 years but all of a sudden you meet him you're not going to be extremely close to him and you say hey how are you probably exchange numbers and all that but as you keep meeting that person, what happens? The relationship becomes strong, right? There's, there's nothing artificial about it, right? You begin to, you know, uh, have a good friendship with each other. And same way in a cell group, if, if I don't build meaningful relationships, or if we don't build really meaningful relationships in a cell group, it becomes artificial. Now, what happens when something is artificial? It becomes stable. Right? So, very important. <clears throat> Receive the love, upward model. Reciprocate that love, inward model, to one another. Right? Thirdly, the outward model. This is where it gets interesting. The outward model, outward value is found in groups that understand that they are on a mission in this world. That is to go out and make disciples, right? So now, firstly, the upward model, love the Lord with all your hearts, you're doing it for God too. You love everyone within the cell group, you express your love, you care for each other, you support each other, you build meaningful relationships. And now it's not just staying there, what, what do we do? There's the outward model. So as a team and as a unit, as a cell group, you realize that, hey, now let us go out and make disciples. Right? Um, and the commission is given in, uh, in the book of Matthew when, when Jesus was going up to the heaven. He said, go and make disciples. That's the commission. Right? Uh, now, our mission in this world is to go out, to perform disciple making, to make disciples, and we are to lead others to Christ. Now, <clears throat> I want to share this. If at one, if at one point, like you know, for example, you, you started a cell group, take your time. Like right? you don't have to say, okay, I started my cell group, now let's go on a mission. Let's go out and reach out. No, it's all right. Take your time. You can you can take maybe two years, one or two years, build relationships inside. And once you build those relationships, once you think that as a cell group, we're strong, you can work together as a team, then go out and reach out. Now, the mistake we can make is you say, okay, we started a cell group. Five months down the line, we say, okay, let's go as a team and do some outreach. Now, it can be done. Nothing wrong. Uh, it can be fruitful too because you're ministering God's word. But here's the thing 
when when we go out in, in, in oneness, in unity, there is there is power, right? It, it, it you'll be able to touch many lives when you do that as a team. Okay, let, let's look at the example of Jesus himself. What did Jesus do? He chose twelve. He said to the twelve, "Okay." Did he say at the beginning itself, "Let's go out"? Let's. Did he make the, send them two by two immediately? No, he didn't. What did he do? He worked with them. He built a relationship with them. He ministered to them. He let them see his life. All the things that he did, the miracles, took them everywhere. It was probably after only a year right, that he said, okay, let's make two by twos. And we'd send everyone, go out. Whatever I've thought, whatever you've seen me do, go out and do. So you see what, what you see that model, it's so powerful. Right? Now, as a cell group, if you have a cell group, you've been leading a cell group for three or four years, and you've not been, you know, going out and reaching out to people, you can consider this, right? You know, maybe as a team, you could just plan something, try it out, right? And there's no harm in trying. Yes, there's no harm in trying at all. Try out new things, try out new strategies, try out new ideas as a team, sit together, plan. That's the best part about a cell group, right? So since you, you've made relationships, go sit, sit. Write down, think about ideas, think about strategies, where to go, how to do, uh, put your thoughts and ideas together, brainstorm them. Okay, let's do it this way. Well, right, there's nothing wrong. Remember we talked about our cell groups, uh, you know, uh, is it something that is going to work in the year 2024? Yes. It worked in the early church, it will work now, it will continue to work till the end of time. Whether there is digital, you know, online church, or whatever happens, people meeting together will always happen. Right? And then this can, you know, turn into a way of reaching out, ministering to people. Right? And and that way, what you you and I, you know, we intentionally may not be raising up leaders, but over time we may notice that hey, this person who was with us who was very shy or very quiet. It's now so bold and he's willing to go out and minister to people and or he's willing to go into colleges and you know talk to people right the outward mob. Uh, and 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 this way what are we doing? We are fulfilling the vision or the mission that God has given us the bigger mission right of making disciples. And finally the forward model. Now, the forward model or the forward value uh, is seen when Christ's followers are taught to obey all things Christ taught us and values, the forward value centers on growing followers of Christ to be disciple making disciples. Right? So, almost an overlap of the outward and the forward model. So, you go out together uh, in the outward model, but in the forward model, uh, the the, the important value is focusing on training up leaders to fill up certain positions either in the church or to focus to raising up next leaders, growing up as disciples, and, uh, and it's basically multiplication of leaders. Right? Now, I said this in the first class, the greatest sign of a leader is how many leaders he's able to raise, right? Uh, so the moment, again, I say this, the moment I start, I should also plan my exit, right? So the forward value is basically you're training up people. You're saying, hey, why don't you take up this? Now, it's been two years I'm leading the cell group, right? And for two years, you have been sitting in the cell group, Yes, I've given you a few opportunities, but now I'm going to step back. You lead the cell group. You make all the decisions, all the plans, everything. Right. So what are you doing? You're stepping out. You're giving somebody else an opportunity, uh, and they in turn 
can become good, great leaders. And again, they can raise up other leaders. So this is going to be a cycle. That's what the forward model is. And so when generally, uh, basically, these are uh, values taken from our Lord Jesus himself. But these values applied in a cell has seen success, has seen fruit. And, and also what we'll do is, after we finish talking about uh, cell groups, we'll also talk a little more about discipleship towards the end of this course. We'll talk about how to, uh, you know, and, uh, what is involved in raising up disciples and uh, you know, what are the pros and cons, uh, pitfalls to avoid while raising up disciples as well. So, uh, so any questions on this? The upward, inward, outward, and forward. Model. Now, uh, even as you are doing this in your cell group, you don't have to, you know, explain uh, to your cell group members you know, this is what i'm doing right now is called the inward model uh, but what you can do is you can teach this to your cell group uh, just probably take these four points and then reiterate it here this is what uh, cell groups are meant for uh, and then you can probably every once a month just reiterate it to the those who are attending and so what happens is it gets into them okay I need to love the Lord my God to I need to reciprocate that, that people see uh, the love of God in me then I'm also supposed to go out and reach out and wherever I am whether I'm in the workplace in college I'm supposed to go and make disciples and finally I'm also supposed to raise up leaders so the more we you know speak of it the more we teach it the more we'll be able to uh, you know the cell group members will receive it and that's there in their heart okay it's one day that i should become a leader so i need to prepare myself for it right <clears throat> any questions it's exciting right um, you know i i think the one of the most exciting things as leaders is to see another young person right raising up to that level of leadership uh, uh, and uh, recently, you know, we had our youth missions. We went to another state, and uh, you know, we gave our youth opportunities to share you know, certain people from church history. Um, and we would, we we had given them, I think, it was forty-five minutes per session. And uh, you know, one of them come to our locations at uh, East, 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 you know. He said so beautifully. I was really, you know, I was so taken aback. He was probably in his early 20s. He shared so beautifully. It was like as if he was, you know, in 20 years of ministry, he was confident. He just knew exactly, you know, intonation, his speech, and uh, rate of speech, and his examples. It was just beautiful to him. He said, he's only 20, 21 years old. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, you know, we got to raise up these kind of leaders. And imagine how is he going to be when he's, you know, five years down the line, 30 years old. He's so confident and doing so well. And, and it's wonderful to see this. And, and I can only picture, you know, the next, the generation after us getting so much better than what we were doing. Right? And that, that's, that's the whole goal, right? building God's kingdom. Okay, let's go to how to lead. A great cell group meeting. Okay. How to lead a great cell group meeting? Again, uh, this is just guidelines and thoughts uh, you can add to all of this. One, have a favorable environment. Right? Uh, a house is always the best. Right? People feel comfortable in homes. But if that's not an option, you can always meet at uh, you know, other places, coffee shops. All of that, but uh, just make sure that you can hear each other. There's not too much of disturbance. Uh, have a favorable environment. Two, uh, praise and worship to really set the atmosphere. Uh, because uh, when, when we praise and worship God, you know, the Bible says, the Psalmist says, He inhabits in the praises of His people. So when we praise and when we sing songs of worship and adoration, His presence comes. Uh, so it's good to uh, praise and worship. Then, thirdly, Christ-centeredness is the life of the self. Don't draw attention to self 
or to anyone else. Okay. Uh, now, this is something that we must all learn and grow. You know, uh, as cell group leaders, uh, initially we may feel like, okay, uh, what do I share? What do I say? And there are times when we may just end up, you know, keep sharing our own testimony. You know, God did this, God did that. Avoid that. Right? Uh, don't draw people to yourself and don't draw uh, people to, to anyone else. The whole point of the cell group is Christ centeredness. For example, you know, uh, many years back now, this is a, this is an example, right? So many, many years back, it was 2015, and I went to a, it was a new life group uh, that we, that had started. And so I went to the life group just to attend the life group. And, uh, you know, we be open with praise and worship and, Everything started and then uh, came to an icebreaker. Then we all sat down for discussions. And uh, so the life group leader said, okay, let's all, uh, you know, just dis discuss on the points, the questions were given. And people shared their thoughts. And it kind of got over a little quickly because there were about five or six of us. So, uh, you know, the discussions, it was supposed to be 45 minutes, but it just, you know, within about 20 minutes, so the discussions got over. And the life group leader, okay, he's a wonderful life group leader, okay. It's no more here than in the other. Um, he said, uh, okay, so I'll just share something. And he began to talk about you know, uh, what happened in his school days. Some, the testimony, all that is good. So he started telling, you know, when I was in sixth standard, this happened, that happened. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, when is he going to stop? Uh, because everyone was like, okay, this you know, sitting and let's meet again. But in my mind, cell group happens once a week. And in that one hour, we want that one hour to be fruitful. So I had to interject. I had to say, okay, let's you know, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something in the scriptures. Uh, uh, come up with some questions. So, uh, you know, as leaders, these are things that we have to do. But if you're leading a cell group, that is the responsibility of a life group leader or a cell group leader to guide the discussions. Right? So there's nothing wrong. So, you know, initially I used to think, what will they feel? Will they get angry with me? Will they get upset? Will they say, okay, I don't want to be a life group leader anymore? And all these thoughts would come. But remember that as a leader, you have the responsibility to do that, we guide the discussions. We tell them, okay, hey, can we do it this way? And uh, and if you're a cell group leader, right, uh, or a cell group member, uh, when these kind of things happen, you know, uh, never look at your cell group leader saying, oh, well, he did so many things wrong. You know, right? It, it is. It's just that we want the cell group to be Christ centered. If it's testimony time, feel free to share your testimony. But when it's discussions, uh, you know, everything should be in line with what who Jesus is and what he's doing, right? Christ centered. Totally, prayer. The life of a cell church is prayer. What makes a cell church strong and together, you know, uh, there's this. You know, relationships build meaningful is prayer number one reason is prayer it's not about the location it's not because there are 10 other families near our home it's not about uh, because the timing is correct all of that are, you know uh, it's important you can't have cell group at uh, one o'clock of the afternoon and everyone said yeah. we have to use our wisdom and all of that but the point is where is priority uh, as a cell church or cell group, you must be, you must drive the group through prayer, right? Praying for the church, praying for the cell members, praying for the leadership in the church, uh, praying for one another, right? Uh, very, very important. Uh, and, and when we pray together, it really binds each one of them together. 
it, it makes the group strong. And then you can pray for uh, oikos, which is contacts, those who are uh, immediate unsaved family and friends, and others who are uh, trying to reach Christ, right? Uh, trying to know about Christ, that God may open doors uh, and bring people to self. So, so prayer, undergird your cell group through prayer. Now, I think somebody raised their hands. Was it uh, Abu Bakr? I'm not sure who raised their hands. Sorry. If you did raise your hand, go ahead. If you have any question, feel free. Oh. Nobody raise their hands. No, sir. I don't have questions, sir. It's, uh, it's not too much, sir. Sorry, you have a question. You don't have a question, Abu Bakr? Yes, I do have question. I do have any questions. Okay, okay, no problem. All right. So let's go to the fifth point. Right. Uh, again, very important prayer. Right. Uh, sometimes we may get our focus, you know, in in you know all of this outreach and all these things, disciple making, all of it. But let let it be done through prayer. Right. Best example, you know, Jesus did. I love that. He went, he prayed, he came back, and then he chose his 12 disciples. You think Jesus could have chosen the 12 disciples without prayer? He's the son of God. He doesn't need to spend hours of prayer just to choose 12 people. But he did it. He went, he prayed, came back, and then he chose his 12. Right? So even when it comes to us as leaders, we're choosing the right leader, choosing the next uh, uh, a disciple who's going to take up the mantle, you've got to be careful, right? Fifth one, delegation of responsibilities to all cell members. Recognition and utilization of all the gifts in a cell, right? Delegate responsibilities. And I'm sure most of us do that, right? Uh, uh, and if you're a cell group leader or a cell group member, right? Delegation is very important. As a leader, delegate, right? Uh -huh. Give people opportunities. And when you give them opportunities, check their heart motivation, right? Don't feed into anyone's ego. Now, gifts and skills are there. Yes, right? God gives us gifts. We can sing 100 songs at one time. We can play you know, all three instruments at the same time. That's good, right? But the heart check the heart motivation right now let, let me give you this example this happened just a couple of weeks back we had a new uh, young couple that came to church and uh, they came to church they said he came up to me and he said you know what i'm an audio engineer and uh, this sound was not proper to say i think you know the reverb was too much and so he was sharing with me yeah. Uh, so I listened to everything. I said, uh, is there anything you want me to pray for? So I prayed for him. But then I told him, come back next Sunday. He came back. Next Sunday, he came back again. He said, you know, the monitors are not, uh, there's something wrong with the monitors. Uh, what kind of app are you using? I said, see, I don't know. You can ask the sound team. He said, is there anything to pray for? I prayed for him. He came back the following Sunday. This happened for four to five Sundays, and then he asked me, uh, can I join the sound team? I said, sure, you can join the sound team. So I set up team, there's volunteer guidelines. I sent him the volunteer guidelines, he read through it. I introduced him to the sound uh, team leader, and he said, uh, you know, uh, okay, I will, I, will, I will talk to them, and I, maybe twice a week I will uh, give my availability to to the sound. Now, what I got to know is, you know, he said that I'm an audio engineer and all of it. What I intentionally told the sound team was, if he wants to join the team, he will have to for two or two, or three months. He will he will not be doing sound, but he'll have to carry the instruments and I'm sorry, he'll have to carry the speakers, the mics, he'll have to carry equipment from the storeroom into the hall. So don't give him, you know, we have uh, you know these you know, a mixer where everything is done on the pad, right? So uh, so all the settings and the, all of those things are done in a in a tab. So 
So, so I told the team guys, if he comes, if he says he's willing to serve, wonderful. Give him the role of carrying the speakers, the mic stands, and all of them. So he he had called up the sound team leader, and the sound guy said, "Okay, if you want to come? Come at six a.m. You have to carry all the speakers into the thing." So he came. He came. He was very. Uh, he did it, and then. Uh, you know, they came and asked, they came and spoke to me. The sound team came and spoke to me. He said, see, he was not interested in all of this. He wanted the to only do the audio thing on the that. I said, no. But he's an audio engineer. He's been an audio engineer for 10, 12 years. I said, good. Let him first carry the speakers for three or four months. And we'll give him this. I, because I knew... He wanted things easy. And that's not how it works. It's end of heart. But, uh, that's the that's truth. I, 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 we want to check hard. What is the motivation of why you want to serve? Uh, when you look at it, there's, you know, in church, we have it in, um, uh, there's an aeronautical engineer. Right? He's an engineer. He makes planes. Uh, he comes to church. And he puts the chairs two Sundays a week. You know, aeronautical. You think he doesn't know anything? He knows everything about soft. But he does it quietly. And slowly we'll get him into the sound of sound team. So you know, don't feed into people's egos. When you, now, it's not like you're not going to give them opportunities. You give them opportunities, but give them something small first. Let them be faithful in the small. And then you slowly give them better, bigger opportunities. And they begin to value what they have. Right? Six, sensitivity to visitors and unbelievers. Right? Don't condemn on other religions, uh, persuasions or practices. The gospel is not about condemning, but about proclaiming Jesus. Now, the biggest mistake a leader can make is talk about other religions. Right? To prove that my religion is better than yours. Uh, the mistake I've made, I've made this many times. And they proved why their religion is better than ours. Right? Meaning, they had a hundred other things to say. Why theirs is better than us. So never try to, you know, condemn other religions. Never try to bring them down. Now, Jesus, I love what Jesus said. You shall know the truth. The truth will set you free. Very simple. Everything that Jesus said has a point. He didn't just randomly say things. You know the truth. Truth will set you free. You speak the truth from God's word. That itself will set people free. Remember this. Uh, this happened in... Uh, I, I don't remember. I think it was 2016 or 17. This young boy, he came up to me and uh, we were here and he said, uh, you know, we, we don't believe in speaking in tongues. So, so, so. That's, that's all over. But he had a good heart, right? Yeah. Very good heart, honest heart. He wanted to learn. I said, okay, that's what you believe in. So uh, for me, initially, I was very taken aback. And he said, okay, I want to volunteer with you. Okay set up the chairs or do something. But he was very, very faithful. He would come, he would do it. Every single Sunday he was there. And, uh, but he still didn't believe. Uh, many things was that he was not okay with some of our things. Uh, no, every Sunday he would come. So I never forced him to believe, nor did he, but he kept sharing his thoughts. Uh, you know, when you said this, it didn't make sense actually, or you know, we would always say something like that. But then, oh, after a year, I think a year or one and a half years, you know, he just began to understand. He said, Okay, you know what? I believe it. Uh, and I'm praying that God fills me with the Holy Spirit that even I can pray and speak in tongues. But there was no defense given, there was no condemnation, nothing. It's the truth of God's word preached on the pulpit Sunday after Sunday, hearing it minister to his life. Right? Next one, 
creative self form, creative self formers and presentation on facilitation of the work. Very, very important. Now, in a cell group, especially in APC, what we do is we follow the Sunday sermon. Now, in the cell group meeting, don't make it sermon part two, right? Meaning the same sermon repeated here. No. Uh, make it allow people to discuss. Thankfully, we have three questions that we can talk about. But now, if you go to our uh, website, apcw.org, you go to ministries, you go to sermons, you'll find sermon notes. Now, why towards the end, you'll see LG study material. Now, this was not always there. Over time, uh, you know, we, we put it there because we wanted our life group leaders to follow a certain format. Right? And, and then later on, we started putting questions. Why? Because sometimes the questions would go all over the place. So we wanted our questions to be uh, in line with the sermon. So now we have three questions. So everyone are discussing three or four questions. Okay. And like last Sunday, we talked about uh, I think it was faith, right? Uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, uh, four questions. Talk about that. Right? I allow people to discuss. Now, don't make it boring. Don't make it like another song. Right? Uh, what will happen? People will get, hey, this I heard it on Sunday. Why am I hearing it again? I'm not getting an opportunity to speak now. Give people opportunity. It should be 90% of others speaking, 10% of us speaking as leaders. Right? Uh, and that 10% is only guiding the discussions. Right? Um, eighth one, after the meeting formally ends, meet up and follow up with uh, people in the church. If there are new visitors within a cell group, let them know about the cell group. Let them know uh, about the church. You know, There'll be times when uh, people will come, they're new to a cell group, especially people from other faith may come, they may not know church. So ask them, you know, have you heard of church? You know, we have these you know, five locations, so we have three locations. This is where we meet, this is the timing. Um, if you'd like, you can come, right? Or if you also like, you can continue coming to the cell group. Uh, give them time, right, to make their own decision. Uh, ninth one, conflict handling and problem solving. Uh, when we are dealing with people, there will be conflicts. Right? Jesus had to deal with them. Right? Uh, there will be problems that have to be solved. So uh, this is where, as leadership, we show maturity. Uh, we show wisdom. And we try our best to resolve conflicts and help people to solve their problems. Remember? Even as we do that, we are not God. We cannot take God's place. There are certain things that only God can do. All we can do as leaders is say, okay, you know, this is as much as I can do, but I'm going to pray for you that God can. The mistake we make is we try sometimes to take the role of God right? and we try to do everything on our own, which is just going to burn us out. Right? And that's not what we need to do. Uh, conflict handling also right? make sure you hear hear the story from both sides so you're able to handle the conflict in the right way and uh, solve problems within the group right now these problems can be very small right uh, uh, but those small problems maybe may look small to you and me but to the person who's uh, sharing it it may be a big problem right and over time I have learned the hard way right I may think, hey, that's such a silly problem. But for him, it's a big problem. Or for her, it's a big problem. So be able to understand those things right? as, as leaders. Uh, and I, it is a part of my calling. I ask to resolve conflict. Don't run away from conflicts. Don't run away from problems. Stop. Get it resolved. Uh, and remember that uh, uh, you, know, you can't control people's emotions. You can't control people's actions towards feedback and correction. Right? But but you're doing it if you do it the right way, you're free from you know any kind of guilt or condemnation. You know that you've done it the right way. Okay, so there's a few aspects on how to lead a great self group. So what do we do with our children? Uh, quickly I'll just share a few points and then we close. Uh, 
you know, when when it comes to life groups or cell groups, you know, we have family cell groups, then we have children. What do we do with the children? You know, during the early days, we would bring a piece of paper and then some crayons and make them color. Right? Now, please don't do that now, right? Children have great spiritual capabilities, right? Children are very likely to understand spiritual truths and more than adults of themselves. Like I've got two boys, one is eight and one is six. And the eight-year-old asks questions that sometimes, uh, recently he asked me, when is Jesus coming? And I said, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so when he comes, can we see him? I said, yeah, you can see him. How can we see him that time we can't see him now? You see the questions that they ask. So I had to say, you know, you get a glorified body. But, you know, the questions they ask is, is much more than what we used to ask when we were eight years old. When we were eight years old, we were asked, well, what is the route to go to the park? But their questions are completely <laughs> different. Right? So look at children in a way that, okay, their understanding is much, much higher. Right? Uh, we have a personal responsibility to raise up the next generation. Uh, we need to build relationships with our younger generations right start them off at 10 8 10 12 raise them up that's why we started teen church we have children's church you know in children's church i was surprised you know they were teaching them lifestyle evangelism I said, wow right and it's it's good it's good we're raising up the next generation we release them into the things of god where they they have this passion for god so uh, we want our children to be discipled. Now, for that, we need to create a culture of good leadership, good fathers and mothers who can mentor, train, and disciple our young people. Right? So, when it comes to family cell groups, what we can do is we can appoint a person, like a mature person, and as the main adults group is going on, maybe the children can meet and the children can have a, a time of worship and prayer and uh, you know they can uh, they can also discuss what what they feel like you know you know uh, simple questions on faith can be asked uh, you know or you can also involve them in the praise and worship together right so people watch right uh, and children like to watch and they learn so, so praise and worship, the children are watching. Okay, everyone are singing, praising, they're lifting their hands, they're clapping. And so it goes into them. They watch and they learn. And so after praise and worship, they can go to another room or another place. And uh, an adult can, you know, uh, hold, can have the cell, cell group meeting for the children there. Right? Uh, that's one option. Uh, they can take a scripture or they can take some stories and make it, Make it something uh, with, that is fruitful, right? Don't give them the phone and make them sit, or don't give them color pencils and make them sit. No, right? Teach them. Uh, our next generation needs this, right? Um, uh, teach any lesson that is suitable for them. Right? So, for example, we're doing faith and science. Right? This is an example. Now, we can't teach faith and science to the children. So, to choose a topic that is applicable for them, right? Uh, where they, it can be simplified and they can learn out of it, right? Uh, the, so the adult who's in charge of this children's ministry must be able to uh, get the children to pray together and uh, learn together as a self, right? Okay, we'll, pick up, we'll stop here. We'll pick up a little more on this and then we'll get into chapter five in our next class. Thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you on Friday. Yes. Thank you. God bless.